Today we conclude the three-part series on how to protest your property taxes. In video one, we covered the process. In video two, we built the case. And in this video, we prepare to go to court. Hey, it's Jaime with Echo Real Estate Advisors. Welcome to my channel. If you're interested in learning more about real estate, consider subscribing. Today, we prepare everything to go to court. In other words, today we prepare everything we need so we can protest our property taxes in the actual hearing. Now, I know what you're thinking, and no, it is not like Matlock. Now, the reason we have to go to a hearing altogether is because the county's response to our initial protest fell flat. Either they didn't budge on the proposed value or their revised value just didn't meet our expectations. Now, let's break it down into two phases. How to prepare and the strategy you'll need when you're on the inside. Now, an important disclaimer, this is Texas. I am specifically referencing Texas and even more specifically Tarrant County. Now, Dallas County, Travis County, Harris County, a lot of the major cities operate in very similar formats. But for our example, this is Tarrant County. So take that with a grain of salt. Your county may vary slightly, but it won't vary too much. In order to prepare, you need five copies of the following. The comps of the properties that you're comparing your property to, the pictures of the properties that you are comparing your properties to, and the actual pictures of the property that you are protesting. And in addition to that is the memo sheet. There is a link in the description below of the exact memo sheet template that I use. You're going to need a memo sheet, which is a summation of what you're asking for. Now let's park it here for one second. Those pictures of the other properties, we want those to look amazing. We want those pictures to look phenomenal. But in contrast, we want the pictures of our property to look bad. We want our property to look like it can use some investment. We want that stark contrast. Now, pro tip, it is okay to present additional information that you may have failed to include that first time. As a reminder, you, are, you already have a lot of this information because you did your initial protest and provided this up front. So if you find some additional information that can build your case, don't hesitate to include it. And another thing. Okay, now let's cover the date of the hearing. You wanna show up at least 15 minutes early so you can check in. You, once you check in, you're gonna be invited to wait. Most often, you, they will be a little bit behind, but you never know. Sometimes there are no-shows to where they get caught up or on the rare occasion, they're actually ahead of schedule. But again, that is rare. Once your name gets called up, you're going to be escorted to a room. Now, again, it varies county by county, but as a reminder, this is not a Matlock situation. You're going to be escorted to a small room where there's going to be three panelists and at least one county representative. One of the panelists will be reading to you the disclaimer, what your rights are and what rights you don't have. But mostly they're going to focus on the rights that you do have and the process of the hearing. Now, as a panelist finalizes the disclaimer, he or she is going to ask you if you would like to present your case First, it is optional. You can go first or you can allow the county's representative to go first. My preference is to go first. I like to have that first strike. So the flow is going to be you get four minutes. Generally, it's four minutes. Again, it varies by county, but you will be given four minutes. And then the county's representative is going to be given four minutes to present the county's case. You will have a chance for one rebuttal. And then once your rebuttal is done, the county will have 
a chance for a rebuttal. After everybody has been heard, the panelists will confer for a few minutes and it is at that time that they'll determine if you have won or lost. So really it comes down to who presents the most compelling case. My suggestion is for you to take me up on that offer of downloading the memo sheet template. And if you don't want to use my template, fantastic, create your own. But my suggestion is to go ahead and walk in there with some written statement so you don't have to grasp at straws and really get carried away by the moment. You have something that you've prepared and you can use that as your opening statement. Remember, you have four minutes. It may vary by a minute or two, but these, court, uh, these cases don't last long. They last less than 16 minutes. So you wanna go in there and present your case in a concise and compelling way and it really maximizes your chance at a victory. Now, in the event that you win, All I do is win, win, win. congratulations, you did it, you won, and you're done. You're gonna receive something in the mail verifying that the new protest, uh, the new assessed value has been applied to your property. If you don't see anything within the next 15 days of that hearing, you're gonna give them a call to ensure that it has correctly been applied so you don't miss out on that successful hearing. Now, in the event that you lose, you can appeal. Now, full disclosure, I have not heard of somebody winning in that additional appeal, but if you feel very strongly about your case and want to take it further, know that that is certainly your right and you can certainly do that. So I'm curious, have any of you ever protested property taxes? If you have, let me know in the comment section down below and what was the result. Well, that concludes the How to Protest Property Taxes series. If I can be of any service in any real estate capacity, please feel free to reach out. And if you have any suggestions on other topics that you'd like to see covered on this channel, just let me know and I will certainly do my best to make that happen.